Do you ever find yourself halting between faith on the one hand and unbelief on the other? Do you ever find yourself in this tension of, am I going to believe or am I going to have this tremendous anxiety and not believe? This is the point that Israel finds himself in Numbers chapter 14. In Numbers chapter 14, we see the saddest day in the life of the nation of Israel. They're at Kadesh Barnea, and they've just sent 12 spies into the land of Canaan to see how hard this job is going to be to conquer the land. Now, they didn't need to do that. In fact, God said, you don't need to do that because I'm going to give you the land. It doesn't matter how hard it is. I'm going to give you the land. It was their idea to come up with 12 spies. Well, they come back, and 10 spies had a bad report. We can't do this. There's giants in the land. And two of them, Caleb and Joshua, said, we got this. Look who's on our side. We got God on our side. And that night, the people all wept. They were sad. They were like, oh, we thought this was going to be easy. It's going to be hard. We can't do it. And then they start complaining to Moses, to each other about Moses, and saying, if we had only died in the wilderness. God heard that. And by the way, God gave them that opportunity. They were like, we don't want to die in battle. We'd rather die in the wilderness. And God's like, granted. Be careful how you complain. Now, a lot of times we say, well, just tell God whatever you're thinking. And that's true. You should be able to tell God what you're thinking. But sometimes there's consequences. You don't want to indulge these horrible, evil feelings you have toward God when they're evil and they're wrong. And, and that's what they did. And so immediately, Moses and Aaron, old men, fell on their face and began to pray. They didn't even talk to the people. They just began to pray. They knew the people better. They knew there was no hope in this. They knew their only hope was in God. But Caleb and Joshua, the two men who brought the good report back in their, you know, 30s, they said, no, let's talk to the people. They ripped their clothes. They're like, oh, come on, people, come on. And then you know what the people did? They said, let's kill them. Let's stone them. When you are in a state of unfaithfulness and you encounter a believer who is walking faithfully, they're going to irritate the socks off of you. You're not going to want to be around them. And that's what Caleb and Joshua were doing. They were walking in faith, and these other people were not. God makes an offer to Moses that's unbelievable. It's astounding. God says, I'm going to kill all three million of these people and wipe them out, and I'll start over with you, and you will have the greatest nation ever. You'll be the patriarch. Moses does not even entertain the offer. He just says, Lord, forgive them get us in the promised land. Unbelievable humility on his part. What ended up happening was God said, okay, I'll answer your prayer. They're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Nobody over the age of 20 except Caleb and Joshua will get to go into the promised land. And as for those 10 spies, I'm going to send a plague on them. And God did, and they died almost immediately. Living in unbelief you might think, well, that's a small sin. But not when you think about the person you're doubting. You're doubting God. God has done everything for you. Think of the amazing things God's done in your life. And you're doubting him now? God says, don't doubt. This is going to be the greatest day of your life or the worst day of your life. You might be at Kadesh Barnea in your life. And if you are, take some advice from Numbers chapter 14. Believe. God's as good as his word.